pain. Our emperor had been betrayed, and our father slain. The bright dream of a utopia stolen. The knowledge that the people of Baal were left in our own misery to provide better candidates than we would know no other joy than to fight and to die for the emperor. Our people, our chapter. We sacrifice our humanity, our place amongst our people for the reason of one alone, to defend them. Rage. We are the directed rage of our father betrayed, our angels slain, the dream destroyed, our people in danger. We are the blood angels. What is going on guys? Welcome back and probably shouldn't slam too much on this. Um, so we've got a slightly new recording space for today. Um, it may only be just for this video. It may not be, I don't know. The audio is a bit mm, echoey in here. So <laughs> I'm just trying to find better spaces to present what we're going to be doing. So for that, for this one, I've got the Space Marine Heroes. Um, they're the blind boxes, so I thought it's got a lot of Chinese, Japanese writing on it. <laughs> so uh, what I thought we'd do, as they're blind boxes, I'll just pick a couple of these boxes at random and uh, we'll build our diorama from there. As you may have noticed, as these are blood, blood angels, we will be doing blood angels for the lore for this video. Let's go on with it. So for the actual diorama build, I've, uh, I've gone in and I've used these blind boxes and what we got was, uh, well, this dude, that dude, this dude, and uh, that dude's brother. So got him twice, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's fine. Um, I also didn't realize that you can get other series in this Blood Angels line. I've just seen ones with Terminators. Where, what? Where's the cool Terminator anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're doing this, like, this is going to be a very thrown together, I'm going to do some quick conversions and just sort of let the diorama build itself almost. I'm not really sort of trying to go out to do anything in particular, uh, although there's a couple of things I want to try. I want to sort of try a painted backdrop, um, I want to try illuminating a plasma blast and um, I just want to do some stuff with Blood Angels because I've... I've not done any of them yet, yet. so yep, yeah, let's just see how this tire armor goes and let's get on talking about the lore. The sarcophagus, the year, the first, the pain, the rage, the betrayal. These are all things that blood angels must endure. They fight against time itself for all will fall to the red first or the black rage. The blood angels are deeply rooted in both honor and tragedy. In the annals of the Unification Wars, tales of the Emperor's mighty Space Marine legions abound their conquest immortalized in noble legends. However, amidst these glorious chronicles, the Ninth Fleet, the Revenant Legion, the Blood Angels, remain shrouded in grim whispers and mysterious silence. While other proto-legions clashed in epic battles on Albia, Franca, Yondanesia, fighting alongside the Thunder Warriors, the Ninth Legion was absent, entrusted with a crucial yet unsightly role. Unlike their brethren, who were blooded in glorious combat, the Ninth Legion served as an inferno on the battlefield. Consuming all in their path, they grew ceaselessly an unstoppable force that could not be tamed or controlled, but only endured. Though few in number, these early Space Marine Legions acted as a vanguard, executing precise strikes and audacious raids. They were the pillar upon which each battle pivoted, the epitome of control in warfare. However, the Blood Angel Legion was molded differently. From their earliest days, they stood among the largest of the proto-legions, and when they unleashed war, it was akin to a cataclysmic event, obliterating all opposition with brutal assaults and fury. Their deployments took them to the most perilous war zones on Terra, where the remnants of old night still festered, plagued by radiation 
and chem strains. In these forsaken wastelands, unseen by history's gaze, they stoically held the line while the emperor forged his grand conquest. The grim destiny was no coincidence or arbitrary decision made by a distant commander. Each legion was bestowed with specific genetic traits by the emperor, fitting them for their designated roles. The Blood Angels were no exception. While other legions recruited only the finest of warriors, selecting princes and champions from conquered techno-barbarian nations of old earth and producing only a select few initiates, the Blood Angels embraced the multitudes of the dispositioned and the broken, the murderers and the unsightly, fashioning them into an army of angels. Born from the scars etched by countless generations, dwelling amidst terrors poisoned wilds, the Blood Angels recruits were no longer entirely human. They had become grotesquely mutated creatures, banished and hunted by the tyrants of old earth. Yet from this raw and tainted material arose a breed of legionnaire Astartes, uniformly tall, fair, and their features graced with stern elegance. The enigmatic progenitor of the Ninth Legion possessed a genetic blueprint that favoured the twisted and the mutated, subjecting those induced into the Legion to excruciating pain beyond what most could endure. The harsh realities of exposure to relentless rad zones and insidious poisons ensured that only a sacred few recruits survived the harrowing process to become Astartes of the Blood Angels. However, unlike their counterparts, the Ninth Legion cast a wide net, drawing in entire tribes of wastelanders, poisoners of war, and a constant stream of hopefuls yearning miraculous transformation. While the legend of the Ninth Legion languished, their ranks did not. As their numbers swelled, so did the dark rumours that trailed in their wake. The Emperor's genetic legacy had endowed them with other darker gifts. These gifts earned them a new designation among the Emperor's mortal armies, the Eaters of the Dead. After each battle, the elegant forms of the Blood Angels would linger on the field, haunting the fallen, suggestively feasting upon the flesh and blood of the finest adversaries. Throughout the arduous campaign, upon which to unify Old Earth. Many victories were marred by the sight of the blood-drenched angels stalking fallen enemies and wounded champions amidst fields choked with corpses. Yet few among their critics comprehended the purpose behind this barb barbaric fixation. It was all part of the Emperor's grand plan. The genetic augmentations that had transformed the Ninth Legion, embedding them to steal power from their foes, exorbing their knowledge and skills for the use of their Omophagan? 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 I'm going to put the word up on the screen. Um, their implants. This grisly process merely required the consumption of the enemy's bodies, of the enemy's bodily tissue. In the desolate battlegrounds where they fought, isolated and far from reinforcement, this trait bestowed the Blood Angels with the invaluable information and expedited the readiness of even the rawest of recruits. However, the macabre reputation they had acquired clung to them like a suffocating shroud, diminishing their achievements. They had been forged to combat monstrosities alone in the darkest corners by themselves. They risked descending into abominations more foul than the creatures they fought. The unification wars spread throughout the solar system and the Blood Angels 
joined the fight. Although one of the largest legions, they were not assigned to attack the Jovan Moor Giovanna Moons. <laughs> I could f that word up. Um, or the resource rich inner worlds. Instead, they were sent to Neptune's artificial moons to hold off Xenos raiders and genetically debased human colonists. The mission was to buy time for the Emperor to secure the orbital shipyards of Saturn and gain the allegiance of Mars. It was expected that the Blood Angels would perish in this task. However, when the Emperor returned to Neptune and they were still alive, they had even grown stronger, recruiting from the local population. The Blood Angels excelled in close quarters combat and used these barbaric imagery to unsettle their enemies. They incorporated bloody rituals into their battle tactics, tearing enemies apart and indulging in feasts to break morale. Despite their unpopularity among some of the officials, the Ninth Legion cr played a crucial role in establishing the foundations of the Imperium. They were often deployed alongside other less favoured legions and fought in holding actions during the earliest stages of the Great Crusade. The Blood Angels had a unique tradition of consuming fallen captains to absorb their skills and experience. Recruits would take on the names of the fallen, creating a sense of immortality within the Legion. But this would lead to far, far darker things further down the road. The Blood Angels, once revered among other Space Marine chapters, now suffered from a fatal genetic flaw. Some members experienced a death seeking madness called the Black Rage, while others battled an insatiable thirst for blood known as the Red First. Attempts to find a cure have mostly failed, leading to the chapter's slow decline. Some believe that Sanguinius, the chapter's Primarch, had a stronger connection to chaos during his gestation. They point to his wings as evidence of his mutation, suggesting that th this flaw in his gene seed has lasting consequences for the chapter. However, others argue that the Emperor trusted Sanguinius and oversaw the creation of the Blood Angels personally. Dissenters compare this to the Emperor's misplaced trust in Horus, implying that even the Emperor can make mistakes. Another theory suggests that the flaw stems from the Blood Angels' method of activating the implanted gene seed organs for a process called insanguination. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> the gene seed contains engineered viral machines that transform a human into a space marine. But the exact process of activations has varied throughout history. Originally, insanguination involved injecting aspirants with Sanguinius's blood, a practice that ended with his death. Some of his blood was preserved in the Red Grail artifact and later injected into a sanguinary priest, making them carriers of his power. The drinking of the priest's blood during the induction ritual has become a tradition for the Blood Angels. Over time, mutations and DNA replication errors may have caused the gene seed cells to become unstable, accelerating the development of the flaws. The flaw affects the Blood Angels and their successor chapters, pushing them towards self-destruction, insanity. Unless a solution is found, the chapter and its successors are doomed to the sands of time. The flaws are attributed to defects in the Legion's gene seed organ implant and the psychic disturbance during Sanguinius' final moments. The loss of the stored gene seed imprint during the Horus Heresy forced the Legion to extract gene seed from Sanguinius' body after his death. Every space marine created from this gene seed was destined to succumb to the flaw, with only three individuals managing to overcome the Black Rage throughout the Legion's long history. The Blood Angels and their successor chapters bear the psychic scars 
of Sanguinius' death or the demonic wound he suffered on Cygnus Prime. This can drive them to insanity and unleash the same rage that consumed Sanguinius during the Siege of Terra. Unfortunately, this condition, known as the Black Rage, is largely uncurable. Only a few Blood Angels have managed to overcome the genetic curse. Those afflicted by the Black Rage are confined to the Tower of Amero on the Blood Angels homeworld, hoping for a quick death in combat. They form a special unit called the Death Company, distinguished by their black power armor. Blood Angels chaplains, representing the Emperor's authority, are the only ones able to communicate with and command these afflicted warriors. The Red First is another affliction that haunts the Blood Angels. It is a relentless, battle frenzied and bloodlust that they must constantly suppress. Some blood angels temporarily succumb to this urge during intense combat and fighting. While the red first is their curse, it also instills them with humanity and self-awareness, making them some of the most noblest of space marines. The fate of those who fully succumb to the red first remains a secret. There are rumors of a hidden chamber atop the Tower of Amero, where haunting cries for blood can be heard. Some believe it is the work of cultists seeking to discredit the chapter, while others suspect blood angels overtaken by the Red First. Those that are taken with this affliction of the Red First may develop pale skin, elongated and sharpened eyesight and an irresistible urge to drink the blood of their enemies. This genetic curse has been passed down to the Blood Angels' successor chapters, including the Flesh Terrors, Blood Drinkers, and Angels Sanguine. The Lamenters, a successor chapter of the Blood Angels, managed to eliminate the flaw from Sanguinius's gene seed. Though genetic modifications, however, they may have faced extraordinary misfortune and near annihilation through their history by having the luck of the unicorn, meaning it doesn't exist. The introduction of Primaris Space Marines derived from Sanguinius's gene seed has brought some changes. They initially appeared immune to the Black Rage, but still experienced the Red First. However, they demonstrated better control over their fury, resulting in fewer unfortunate incidents involving civilians or other Imperial forces. I think with that, we are going to leave it here for the lore on this video. Um, it's such a rich lore that I've really had to condense a lot of things, um, cut massive parts out. So we can revisit Blood Angels at some point. We can go into other things if there's more that you'd like to hear about them. Maybe some of the successive chapters, such as the Lamenters or the Flesh Terrors. Let me know. Anyway guys, thank you for joining me on yet another hobby adventure and I will see you in the next one.